Hi, everybody. Um, I um, have noticed that this is going to be a lot. So what I am going to do is I'm going to record half of it for now because it's going to be like an hour long. So about the 30 minutes, I'm going to stop and I will record the next part probably tomorrow because it's late and I'm exhausted. Um, but I'll, 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 I'll give everything and I'll put, I'll post both parts, um, in, in the group. So we're not going to miss anything. Okay. So I am so happy that everybody has been so engaging and asking me all kinds of questions about the chakras because this is really important. We cover the last time the lower chakra. So we're going to talk about the upper chakras and we're going to start with the midpoint, which is the heart. It's not part of the upper chakras, but the chart is like nowhere. It's not the upper, it's not the lower chakras. It's the mid section. So we're going to talk about the heart first, okay? The heart chakra contain what's known as a higher level love, which is a love without conditions. Uh, it's a love unconditional and without possession or jealousy. Um, this chakra is green in color and it governs the chest area, the heart, the lungs, even the, the down your arms and your hands and your fingers. Uh, in this chakra, um, we reach uh, elevated emotions, um, not just love, but compassion, empathy, and ecstasy, bliss. So these are really high levels um, that are achieved because of the power of the heart. When you come up to the heart chakra, you feel a different level of love, not just you know, love. Uh, you still you, you start to feel a deep and profound love for yourself and for others. So the consciousness of the heart chakra is the consciousness that says, I want to be best for myself and for everybody else. Also, separation consciousness starts to dissolve in the heart chakra um, because the lower chakra is about yourself and with yourself and with others and with community. But the, in the heart chakra, it starts that consciousness that we are one right and the height of that is in the crown um so what's known as unity consciousness i'm connected to all things and connected to the universe i'm connected to god and i feel the connection very de very deeply um the biggest energy core here um is the heart chakra it's also the portal of your intuition. Yes. Um, so it's at the heart chakra where you actually get accurate intuition um, first. I always tell my ministry students, uh, when you're talking to your sitter, to the person that has asked you for the reading, don't tell them what you think. Don't think the message, feel the message. Okay, you don't want to, when we're thinking about messages, we, we're trying to, and this is just a human condition, we're trying to interpret the message and that's not our job. Our job is to deliver the message. So we want to feel the message. Okay, so from a scientific perspective, um, intuition is studied as a subconscious phenomenon, but it's not a brain phenomenon at all. It starts in the heart. This is your portal of intuition. The more connected you are to your heart, the more access you have to pure intuition. So we're going to look at signs that your heart may be blocked or weak. Or weak. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the thymus gland is related to immunity. So any kind of immunity disorders are related to the heart chakra. Uh, but also everything around the lungs area. So sleep apnea, allergies, asthma, all these that affect your breathing are part of the heart chakra. The inability, to, of course, to connect with others and feel that you are a loner. And this is not just being a homebody. I'm a homebody. But um, when you prefer not to have connections, 
uh, with others for a prolonged period of time, this is a problem. I, I love being by myself, but I have very strong connections with a lot of people. Um, so that's when it becomes a problem, when you just don't want to have connections or you are okay being by yourself for a long, 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 long time. Uh, also being unaware when you don't believe in your own abilities, in your own healing abilities, um, that's a problem with the heart chakra. When you don't like touching, to be touch or touch, uh, that's an issue with the heart chakra because remember the heart chakra also includes your arms and your um, hands and your fingers. Um, so some people are more prone to touching than others, which is okay. Um, but you need to, to use your discernment because um, some people use touching in a inappropriate way and that's not okay. So showing signs of affection uh, to your partner, your children, your uh, friends, uh, your parents, your siblings, it, it's, it's okay uh, in moderation, of course, in public, in moderation, it's okay. Uh, but if somebody is uncomfortable uh, we need to have a conversation. Um, now, when you don't like to touch or to be touched anywhere except the bedroom, this is a problem because humans need affectionate touch, loving touch every day, not just sexual touch. So we need somebody to hug us and to hold our hand and to caress us on a daily basis. Um, so if you're very kinesthetic, so when you touch objects and, um, you can read their energy or, you know, get visions, your heart, um, heart chakra is very open because that's the first center of intuition, right? Um, so people that do Reiki, um, or people that, you know, read objects have usually their heart chakra really open. When people tell you uh, things very frequently, like you're selfish or that you come across as aggressive or unkind, uh, again, you have to use your discernment because this is not one person talking to you this has to be like a lot of people and people that you know and trust and and you know that they have your best interest at heart this is not just a partner that wants to manipulate you in doing everything that they want all the time and that's why they're calling you this thing so use your discernment um what we what we want is not to make it about them all the time or about ourselves all the time is to find that balance. So what we're looking for is patterns, okay? Patterns of behavior. So clearly, uh, if you're having issues with love, connections, uh, you're feeling as an outsider, disconnected, you don't like to hug or use your hands to touch in any way, uh, you cannot see your gifts or see yourself as a healer, um, that's a problem with the heart chakra. Now, if you're feeling a lot of love, if connection and love comes easy, if forgiveness comes easy, because when you can forgive others, you start by uh, forgiving yourself. This this is an indication that your heart chakra is open. Now, the, the, the heart chakra, the heart chakra blossoms, um, like a lotus flower, right? With a lot of petals. Also the crown does that, uh, or I see it like that. Um, and when it, this happens, you're more able to access your gifts and spiritual abilities and soul qualities and high divine frequency. The heart chakra is the, is the balance point uh, of your multidimensional uh, being that's that's what I was talking about before because it's the midpoint um, balanced heart empowers you to perfectly find a balanced living uh, as a material being and in a spiritual being um, because you know we don't want to swing 
either way in any direction. Uh, you can be on balance uh, physically and you can be on balance virtually um, too. So to open your heart chakra, essentially you focus your awareness within. And I, I like to do this in meditation. And I like to start by asking to be surrounded uh, with light and love and with my team of guides, angels, ascendant masters to surround me and bless my energy and assist me in opening up my heart chakra uh, in the way that is uh, will most serve according to divine will, right? So direct your attention to the center of your mind. We're going to start at the top and we're going to um, focus our awareness within. Remember where attention goes, energy flows. And we're going to imagine, visualize experience uh, that you're taking an elevator down from your mind to your heart. You're going to go through your third eye and you're going to go through your throat, thymus, and into your heart, focusing on the center of your chest um, to be, um, to enter within your awareness. So you can look for a golden light or a pink light and tune into that. Um, and tune into whatever sensation, if you feel tingling or pressure, you, you focus into that. And then you breathe into that, allowing your heart to open. And as you, that's when you're inhaling, when you're exhaling, you let go, you let go and release into the light any past pain or traumas or tension or feelings of not being enough and feelings um, about not being able to connect and so on and so forth. Uh, so what you want to do is you move your awareness within and as you're breathing in, you're gonna find the center of your heart and in the very middle of that center, you're gonna breathe in. And then you're in that pinpoint center, you're gonna find its center and then its center and then its center. So you're continue to dive in within really deeply into your heart. And the rest of the heart, as you're going inside, it opens and expands and grows. And that's the way to open your heart chakra. It's a beautiful process. And because you're, it, it empowers your heart and uh, you know, you're, you're asking for love and light and all your guides and angels and ancestors. So it's just a beautiful um, practice. Uh, it's a beautiful way to open your, your heart chakra. Now um, the throat chakra is blue. This is light blue. This is dark blue. This is indigo. This is light blue, okay? And it's just so all sources of expression and communication. It's located in your throat and it governs your neck, your thyroid, your mouth, your shoulders, your jaw, your teeth, and your ears. Um, so if you look, if you grab your collarbone here, right? You take your two fingers and you go down, you're gonna find this depression right here where your collarbone ends that's where your throat chakra is okay so you know exactly where you're going to invite your mind and your visualization when you're trying to balance it to open it um the sound and that's how i like to to open my throat chakra, I'm really tired, I'm so sorry, um, to, to open my, my throat chakra is with this vibration hum. So hum, and I try to feel it not here, because if you go hum, you might feel it right here. Try to lower that vibration here where you feel that depression, right? Hum. And you're, you're, you're able to move it down and feel it right here. And that's going to um, activate your, your throat chakra with 
with that vibration. Now, when your throat chakra is balanced, we're speaking our truth with kindness. We're able to stand up for ourselves and express our needs, our wants. We're also able to listen because communication is two ways, right? We're also able to listen other people needs and wants and pay attention. A lot of times we live in the shadow and we camouflage. So when, when we are not able to speak our truth um, in authenticity, we're having uh, problems with our throat chakra. Now, even those parts of ourselves that we don't really like, that we have some problems with, some issues with, but we can honor them by speaking about them with love and honesty, that's a sign that our throat chakra is, is in good shape. Um, when your when people have uh, an imbalanced throat chakra, they yell and scream and gossip, and just uh, speak up ugly about other people. You know those people that cannot say anything good about anything or anybody. You know those people. People that are full of anger and negativity. Um, you know those people. So um. Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint if you yourself have um, issues with your throat chakra because we think about ourselves. This happened to me. Um, I thought about myself as a very positive, not, not judgmental person. But when I started working with my mindset, I, I realized that I could work on those points too. Um, so I have some questions that, I, that has helped me and have helped some of my students and some of my um, coaching clients um, to pinpoint if there's imbalance in the throat chakra. For example, do you fail to keep your promises? Do you use your words to hurt others or empower others? Can I express myself honestly? Do others see me as aggressive or overbearing? Do I find it hard to speak up for myself? Do I dominate conversations? And you know, this is a day-to-day -day thing. And every day is going to be different because we're not the same every day. You know, sometimes you're more tired or something happened or whatever. So, you know, don't beat yourself up. Just do the best you can every day. So some days you're going to be able to assert yourself and talk about your wants and your needs. With, without issues but some some days you're going to be really excited about something and you're not going to be a good listener because you just want to tell your story or something really bad happened to you and you just need love from people so you know don't beat yourself up some days are going to be better than others <laughs> what we're looking for is patterns it's something that's ongoing know those specific days that something happened it's the patterns okay so be self-aware and intentional about your energy. That's the key to all of this, okay? Um, so if somebody comes and tells you, um, you know, we already talked about that, that, you know, you, you come off like angry or just make sure that that person is, doesn't have their own agenda, um, that is a pattern that you see other people come to you to tell you, okay? Um, so when we find the pattern, uh, that's when we need to ask, we need to understand why and where it's coming from, okay? So third eye, the third eye, connects us again to our intuition uh, with the help of the heart, um, but to our higher selves. Also, the higher self sits actually not in the third eye, but in the star chakra, but, um, well, it's way higher than that, but, you know, I have just a little bit of space here. <laughs> so, um, but our higher self, uh, we can connect with them through our um, third eye. And again, this is uh, indigo blue. So it's dark blue. 
Um, and when in balance, you feel connected to your intuition. You feel that your life has purpose, that your life is meaningful. You also believe in what is unseen and intangible, okay? You understand that there's a higher power, uh, all of that. So when you're out of balance, you um, it might look like you're anxious or depressed or not trust that there is a higher power or something outside of ourselves. You may have difficulty concentrating. You might have scattered thoughts um, and not have a sense of an inner voice. Um, there is um, there is a fine line between uh, visions and hallucinations, okay? And this is really important to understand. The difference between having your third eye open, being a medium, being able to see spirit, ancestors, angels, and any uh, being from a different realm uh, is very different from having a mental health issue, okay? And the difference is the content uh, the content of the communication first, and then the interference in your life second. Okay. I'll explain. I'm a psychic medium. And people ask me all the time, if I see spirits all around, there are all around. And if I want to see them, I can see them, but I don't because I have very strong boundaries and this is crucial. Okay. Um, I don't want spirits popping up when I'm grocery shopping or having dinner with my girlfriends or having a date night with my husband. Uh, I have very clear business hours. You can show up when I'm working. End of story. But if something is going on that you need my attention right now and this cannot wait, then you can come up. But that has rarely happened. Rarely happened. Okay? So sometimes when I'm teaching... Uh, especially in leadership, I can see my students' loved ones that they come and stand beside them. But that's not intrusive. It's, you know, it's almost like, you know, they came here to learn how to speak to me, so I'm here with them. <laughs> but that's not intrusive. It's not intrusive to them, to me, to the class, to anything. It's, it's, it's kind of cute to see them come in with them. Uh, so that's a big difference. When somebody has schizophrenia, uh, the voices and the visions are intrusive. It bothers them and it's constant. That's what makes them crazy, right? Uh, and they say things that are less than spiritual, less than enlightening. If you have a spirit that's undermining you, telling you to hurt yourself or somebody else or anything that is less than positive, they got to go. You need to send them on their way uh, because that's not a high vibrating energy. It's just not. Uh, my guides would never tell me, Yari, go change that top. You look stupid. First, because that's not helpful to me. Second, because they don't care. That's a very human thing. Spirits don't could care less about that. Okay. So a lot of us, when we open our third eye, we start to see into the future, we can see into the past, we can see um, energy lines on the body, I see neon colors, like those highlighters, those orange and like green yellow, that's what I see, um, and grids, I can see grids, um, uh, or as colors and so on and so forth. So it's important for you to stay grounded in your body. Uh, and I cannot say this enough. Um, remember G, C, P, ground, cleaning and protecting on a daily basis. You didn't took a shower one day and decided that was enough for the rest of your life. You have to clean every day. You have to brush your teeth every day, right? At least I hope you do. Please do. <laughs> um, so it's the same thing because just by walking around, like you get dust on you and dirt on you just by walking around. You get energies that you don't want just by walking around. You need to clean your energy field every day. Uh, so opening up 
and working on this chakra can also bring um like activate your world uh your dream world uh so that's really cool too because we can start having all kinds of very uh clear and visual dreams um when we start opening up our, our third eye so to open your third eye and to activate it one of the important things is to decalcify it our third eye gets uh, calcified and your third eye is not here okay it's not it's inside your brain. So if, if imagine if you had a line that goes through right here and go out the other side and another one that comes through and goes the other side, the, the where it crosses right there is where your third eye is, okay? So many times when your third eye is blocked is because it's calcified and there's certain foods that you can eat to decalcify it. Okay, now we live in a world that is full of chemicals. They're in everything that we eat and everything that we breathe. Uh, and it's just all around us. So try to eat as clean as possible, uh, organic if you can, local if you can. Um, you know, when you buy local, and this is just a side note, um, you consume what's on season, which is going to taste better, but also you're going to, you know, help with uh, small business owners in your area that are working really hard to thrive. So you're going to be helpful to them too. Also, when you consume local things like honey, for example, honey is really important because if you have seasonal allergies, this is going to be a, a, a game changer for you because the local bees are going to consume those and, and process those local allergens that are messing with your nose. <laughs> uh, so, you know, go to your local farm um, farmer's market and get your fruits and veggies from them and get the honey from them. Okay, the local honey. So what can you eat? Seaweed. Seaweed is delicious. Eat it. Just try it. It's delicious. Seaweed, beets, aloe vera, garlic, uh, leafy greens, not lettuce. I mean, you can eat lettuce. Lettuce is fine. Lettuce is great. I love lettuce, but I'm talking about dark leafy greens. Uh, changa mushrooms, apple cider vinegar, raw uh, cacao, uh, spirulina, uh, wheatgrass, um, iodine. Always make sure that you buy your salt with iodine. Um, avocados, bananas, walnuts, beans, avoid processed foods and it's hard i know but try the best you can to avoid processed food to avoid fast foods um be discer discerning uh because if, if you're choosing between fast foods a chicken is better than a hamburger uh it's definitely better than chicken nuggets hot dogs don't do that. That's just so, no, that's not good. Uh, anyhow, so avoid processed foods. The more processed, the, the, the worse. Uh, also avoid fluoride. Fluoride is terrible for the third eye. Uh, and you can definitely purchase a toothpaste without fluoride. Okay. Um, you can also use essential oils. Essential oils can be used to stimulate the third eye. Uh, remove heavy metals from the pineal gland and encourage uh, tissue re renewal. You can use uh, peppermint, sage, clove, mirth, and you can put it on, a, you know, something to, to smell it. You can uh, use it in your body. You can, you know, there's a lot of uses for essential oils. You can use it in your candles. Also mindset. Mindset is important. Um, it's better to be a leader than a follower, but of course there's, you know, times in your life that you have to follow. You have to follow your manager at work or you have to follow a teacher that knows more than you, uh, but need to use your discernment. Okay. Don't follow blindly. That's, that's the key. No, not fo don't follow blindly. Ask yourself, does that make sense or, or, or does it not? 
you can, you know, we have so much information on, at our fingertips. If if anybody, including me, is saying something that you're like, hmm, I don't know about that, Google it, Google it. Um, so that's that's what's more important, not to follow anybody or anything blindly, okay? Um, so also experiences and patterns that have made uh, you get into unhealthy lifestyle choices. Um, that's also an issue with the third eye. Uh, if you have like trust issue, you cannot have good relationship with anybody, friends, lovers. Uh, you cannot connect. That that that's about connection. Okay, connection, not not just love. Uh, connection. Um, and always trying to find the advice from others because you're not able to to come up with an answer for yourself. Um, always trying to get reassurance from people about your decisions. Not trust, just not trusting. Um, you may want to get into these healing modalities like shadow work. Shadow work is important. Um, so all, all that is an indication that your third eye is blocked. Uh, the third eye is all about the unseen world, right? A way to open and activate your third eye is visualization, breath work, meditation. Really taking um, the time to heal. Um, um, it's, you know, breathing in with your, uh, through your nose and in and out of your nose and open to this visualization process. Um, so you can really see yourself, uh, whatever is what you want to manifest and, and then feel um, is a very good way to support your energy centers. Um, so at the end, and I might stop here because I think it's been about half an hour. Um, so at the end of the next recording, I'm going to um, share with you what I do to activate and keep open my third eye. Uh, but after um, this in the next video, we're going to talk about our crown and then the activation. Okay. Um, so I'm very, very happy that you're here and um all the interest that you have uh, taken into this themes. Remember uh, that we're here every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And you can definitely be here with me on the Zoom or you can watch the replay. But if you have any questions at all about this or about anything else, put it in the chat group, uh, in the group chat. That's how tired I am in the group chat or send me a DM. And I've been encouraging people. You've heard me say this several times that I'm encouraging people to put their questions in the group chat, because if you're having that question, probably other people are having that question too. So my answer is going to benefit others. I am okay with the DMs. Totally a hundred percent. Okay. Uh, but I think it will help others. And, and that's part of the reason that we're in a community to help each other, to support each other. Uh, so, and if you want to learn about something specific that I have not talked about, even if I've talked about it and, and you want to learn more about that and, and want me to take a deeper dive into that, let me know. I'll be happy to do it. That's what I'm here. I'm here to support you. I'm not here to listen to myself talk. That serves no purpose. <laughs> so I'm here to support you. I want to teach you whatever you want to learn. So let me know. I'll be more than happy to comply. And tomorrow, um, tomorrow is Thursday, maybe for Friday for the little bites. I'll do the next video and, and I'll put it into the group. Um, so 
Yes, let's do that. Let me think about it. I'll, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Um, so let me know if there's anything that you want to learn about and let me know your comments, your questions, and I'll see you next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern time.